Okay, I think uh, we can start the question and answer session. Uh, I welcome you for the final question and answer session in this uh, Kalal Goda English Medium Retreat. So we have received several uh, written questions. We will start the session with written questions. There are five reports by the day. Avasarai Swami Mahansa. Please pardon me for asking the same question over and over again. I need to clear this doubt which I think will help me in my practice going forward. As Bhante mentioned the other day that it was hard to Bhante too to come to terms with doing nothing and just being. Is the way to this path when you come to anisita state of mind. I am experiencing the same as well. I do know that at different occasions Buddha has preached to different people in different contexts. Could it be that the advice for doing nothing and just being was given to yogi in a higher state of mind like Sota Panna? Yet, with the little knowledge of Dhamma I have and to my understanding, I feel one has to develop Anicca Dukkha Anatta Sanya to experience Nibbana through Vimoksha Mukha. Example, to achieve Nibbana through Animitta Vimoksha, one has to develop Anicca Sanya to the fullest. We do have Anicca Sanya to a certain extent, but not adequate to experience Nibbana. Maybe Tadanga Nibbana, as Bhante mentioned yesterday. My inner feeling is I need to have Anicca Sanya through all my five aggregates, moment to moment in their each action to experience Nibbana. However, another example, in Girimananda Sutta, the Buddha advised at several times, even to the Arahants, to Manasikara Dasasanya. He did not say just bear the pain with answers, with awareness and be in an anisita state of mind. I too have experienced during Animitta Samadhi, the contentment and tranquility like touching Nibbana for a moment. Also, inside to Dhamma, Samarshana or Dhamma Vichaya as we call in Dhamma. Having so much Anusaya within, within having so much Anusaya whether it is far away whether Nibbana is far away much merit to you, Bhante, for having all the patience in answering the same questions over and over again <laughs> with ease and compassion. I do understand Bhante is an example itself, but the rigid mind of mine cannot understand. <laughs> they, are, they are itself teaches me there is no I. It's only a mind which has been rioting throughout Sansara, Teruan Saranai. How to approach? Now, uh, uh, if, but one thing is true now. Say, for example, uh, how one may achieve Animitta Samadhi is going through the Anicca Sanya. And how one achieve uh, uh, what we call the Appanihita Samadhi is by realizing Dukkha. And how one achieve uh, Sunyata Samadhi is by going through the Anatta. So, but the thing is, uh, we can't say, I mean, immediately one may accomplish it to the maximum level in order to achieve uh, Animitta Samadhi. So, Animitta Samadhi may, may achieve oneself when certain amount of Anicca is developed. So then, as you said, so it may come to an Animitta level and stay there for a moment. But again and again, when we are cultivating it, developing it, so that momentary experience become longer and longer. Then one may have, okay, this is kind of a, I mean, then one may register that state. So one, one's mind get accustomed, what we call the family accustomed. with that, accustomed with that. So then say five minutes, ten minutes, so likewise, as I explained again and again, so likewise, so one become more familiar with that animated state. Now the point here is, are we again need to go back and reflect all these things in order to come back here. Now, it is necessary, I mean, when, when we are not yet confident enough or when the mind is not yet familiar and confident, immediately we can't go there to the Animita state, then of course we have to come through the whole process again and again so that mind gets released. 
so once mind get released again and again and you are able to uh, cultivate that level that samadhi for say 40 minutes 45 minutes one one hour something like that then then the mind mind know it is there so mind know it is possible and then actually the advice is let's try to have it while in the walking so then while in the walking it's still difficult because you don't get the kind of very restricted environment for you to achieve animitta rather it is difficult so you, you can't stay there longer so it may be only five minutes you can stay again the nimitta may come kind of a science may come so the point here now is to re recognize why these nimittas are coming so still raga is available still some kind of attachment is available still some sort of uh, resentment is available so due to certain i mean typical apusala mula so we are again and again going and attaching so now it's a good way of recognizing these defilements so rather than simply we are using animita samadhi as a kind of a release and enjoy it rather now one is using it for the recognizing various defilements now the process going on in a different direction now you are sort of recognizing defilements and letting go of that now kind of a fading away of defilements happen now later assume that even in the say in the sakmana in the walking session also assume that you are able to be in animitta for certain amount of time say 30 minutes now you can keep the mind at the animitta state but in a very shallow concentration how you are able to do that now while being in the shallow concentration because to some extent those defilements are now somewhat faded away. I can't, we can't say that it's had completely eliminated, but at least for some extent, they are faded away. They are, they are strength, strengthened has fairly subsided. So then you are able to mean, maintain Animita Samadhi even while in the uh, Sakmana for longer time. So likewise, now we are approaching in different ways. It is not merely through the concentration by, I mean, and actually Buddha mentioned many different ways no, to overcome defilements, to overcome asavas, no, seven, seven steps, seven stages or seven mechanisms Buddha explained. No. So it's, a, it's not a single approach, it's, it's not a one, one path approach, but the different ways, different strategies are there. Using those different strategies, one is trying to sort of uh, have this kind of a state. So when one is getting more and more familiar with it, no, then the next point Buddha mentioned is don't don't try to be that now. Now it is also a samadhi now, and you can be in that samadhi, but don't get absorbed to that samadhi. Just just be out of that. While being out of that, it doesn't mean you are attached to something either. Now typically, when you if I if I am attached to this, if I want to let go of that, then I have to attach to that. So that is a replacement type of thing now. So if I am attached to this and completely letting go of that, without now I am trying to keep my mind without any attachment at all, that is difficult now. I mean, typically mind holds something. But now Buddha asks, don't hold anything. So therefore that is where the Atammeta comes into the picture in another terms that don't, don't try to become anyone and don't try to be anything. Now, whenever we are at, when we are, whenever we are associating any kind of a rupa, so the mind has become that. Mind has coloured from the qualities of that. Now, don't do that. Just keep the mind very relaxed. Keep the mind very unattached. Preserving its original nature, without allowing it to get coloured by whatever the association. So then, then this anisita state becomes more and more kind of a natural state. So the so samadhi samadhi typically consider is kind of an absorption. You are little restricted there, so your mind is fairly confined, restricted, conditioned. But even that kind of a condition is not there. Conditioning is not there. So that is why I mean, uh, Buddha mentioned when someone is in the concentration level and still the refinements are fairly powerful. Yeah, we have to maintain it. You need to have effort. You need to have fair amount of deep concentration otherwise you will get again get out of it because the other external conditions are not not satisfactory not uh, con I mean not conducive for you to be in the that level if not I mean you have to ad address those other external conditions as well you have to restrict them so therefore the, this particular Samadhi you are maintaining with effort 
so that Buddha mentioned sasankara nigaiya varito. So you, so you do some actions in order to avoid the disturbances. But later Buddha mentioned, okay, there is another level, na sasankara nigaiya varito. So we are not doing any kind of a formations. We are not making any formations, any fabrications, any kind of an effort, kind of a natural state. So it's, I mean, basically it is coming more and more, becoming more and more natural. So the mind is in a natural state, it doesn't do anything, but quite contented in that level. So I mean, difficult in a way, because we are used to do something, always we are used to do something, but here we are not used to, we are not doing anything at all. So, and your question, that is it enough to have that without knowing impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, so that is the question again and again, coming to the point. So now here, why yeah, no. we have to one so, so basically, w assume that if we had enough impermanence, knowledge of impermanence, enough imper knowledge of unsatisfactoriness, enough, enough in knowledge of non-self, why again mind go and attach? So mind can't go and attach if we had enough knowledge about this impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and non-self. But again, mind go and attach because we don't have that much of a capacity. I mean, the strength is less in a way. Even though we are able to now maintain in a way to some extent, so we don't, I mean, the wisdom is not yet mature. So again, that's why mind go and attach. Because thinking, expecting something, you know, I mean, say, say you are, I mean, while you are being in the Satmana, suppose you are trying to maintain an anisita state, and now a beautiful flower is there. Again, assume that mind go and attach. Why? Because mind expects something. Mind expects some satisfaction through that flower. You you are appreciating something from that, so we go and grasp that. Because in a way we can we can argue, because mind still hasn't fully comprehend it is impermanent or it is unsatisfactory. So it hasn't comprehend. So it is again going and attaching. But now the yogi has to relinquish that. So mind, the, the yogi may aware of it and relinquish it and again come back to anisita state. So that is why I mean, uh, so so even Sautapana, even uh, uh, Arya, noble person, so Buddha mentioned he may do this attachment, he, he may again and again go through the attachment, can't help. So there Buddha mentioned rather than he going through the complete process, so remind the mind to come back. So you can refer Indriya Bhavana Sutta. Indriya Bhavana Sutta, the first stage is for the Anariya. You know, first stage is for the people who are practicing. So for them, there's a little bit of uh, work to do. Either they are recognizing the Olarika nature, the kind of the rough nature of this attachment, or either to recognize the conditioned nature of this attachment, or either to recognize the, the con what you call the conditionality. Condition in the sense that you recognize, okay, I have, I mean, the attach, this attached grasping state I, has happened because of a lot of constructions, fabrications. So that is an, one level of understanding. Another thing is you understand step by step, okay, this has gone through a stage by stage uh, process. But it's open. But assume someone is capable and again it's going and attaching. So Buddha recommend, okay, now you don't need to go through all this work. Rather, immediately tell the mind, don't be there. Is written. So then for the novels with the recommends, okay, he is atiyati harayati jiguchati. So he, he, he doesn't appreciate what mind is doing. He's a bit of ashamed of what mind has done because already work, I mean, work has done something, he recognized something beautiful, something pure, but still mind is going back to the whole, whole shit. <laughs> so now, now you are having kind of a shame. What's the nonsense this fellow is doing? That's kind of a, that's the kind of an attitude one may have. So even though enough practice has done, enough understanding is there, still the mind is going through this same attachment again and again. So you are not, not appreciating it. You are not uh, accepting it, or rather. Uh, you are become little disgusted about what mind is doing. Then that very uh, feeling returns the mind back. So therefore, I mean, uh, so so we, I mean, so question comes whether we are sotapanas then. 
<laughs> in order to go to that. So, I mean, uh, so this is where I mean we have to be little uh, uh, say I mean practices are there. So in the long run, so actually this sotapanna sakadagami anagami. So all these states Buddha actually introduced at this latter stage of the Buddhahood. Before 20 years, this information are not there even. So later, actually, many people come to the picture and uh, they are with, uh, they are asking whether I am going to the hell realm. I'm, is it okay enough for this and that? So then Buddha say, okay, these other stages are also there, likewise. So I mean, going through, going to understand whether we are sota panna, so certifying that or that thing, actually not necessary. Rather, if we if we know how to continue the path and to recognize defilements and uh, sort of eradicate them so then that's more than enough that's what I feel <laughs> so so they are, I mean, by the way so as again and again when we uh, avoid this grasping recognize this grasping and letting go of that mm, so the uh, the calmness available in the mind the silence available in the mind non-attachment getting more and more familiar in the mind getting uh, more powerful than the conditioned world then. okay so dealing with the conditioned world and just being in the so the non-grasping state is now two levels in a way okay so in order to come to the non-grasping state you need to deal with the condition level condition phenomena in order to develop that moment so once you are here rising here now you are familiarizing with this state so this state now while being more familiar with me so another approach is available now you are getting another dimension okay why why are you going there again i mean you become familiar here more confident here and you start to enjoy here rather than being in the always say dealing with all this uh, condition phenomena and getting frustrated there getting sort of oppressed there now just just be in the unattached state so that is more relaxing Therefore, different approaches are available, definitely. But this is a very, I mean, one approach we can say. So, so again and again, going back to recognizing phenomena and uh, say, understanding their impermanence. I don't think uh, it is necessary, because already we have come through something, and able to uplift the mind to a level which is which is free from attachment, temporary. But this temporary, temporary uh, freedom has to be enlarged, has to be expanded. So then in a way we can uh, uh, say, tell it differently, so the, the result becomes the path. So through the practicing of this conditioned world, so we are able to generate some result. Then now we are dealing with the result. Now maintaining that result becomes your path. So result you have to, you have to cultivate further. Result is, I mean, result has to be developed further. Result has to be lived. I mean, we have to live the result. Now we have to be more familiar with the result. So that is that is the approach we have. We are basically, um, I feel we have to take. But you can try. <laughs> Life is short. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So any other examples? Uh, so actually more and more evidence actually I am getting to prove this path. So that's why I am I am immediately putting to the this this side. So I mean of course we have to do recognize all these phenomena and uh, their impermanent nature and all these things have to be done, definitely. Without that you can't come to this level. So once you are there, I mean some much of familiarizing this state and developing Bhajanga at that level. So I think um, yesterday also I mentioned so the two levels of Pajjanga development Buddha mentioned. The one level is at the level of this uh, Sankhara, condition world, condition level. The other level is once your mind is uplifted to the unattachment level, so they are also, I mean, it's not the job done, lot more to do. So there are the development has to be done by associating the unattachment. Viveka Nisitam, Viraga Nisitam, Nirodha Nisitam, Vassadra Parinami, Satisam Bhajjangam Bhavati. So don't, don't think you are done. <laughs> So rather another level of practice is there, but that practice is quite different from the doing practice, what we did with the condition, condition phenomena. But here 
more of kind of becoming more familiar with the kind of virad, kind of dispassion, uh, resting the mind, allowing it to rest, unattached, relaxing. Uh, so more and more in that side. And even if you come to the Four Noble Truths, so whenever mind is attached, so we can say, okay, that is in the First Noble Truth. Okay, what do you need to do? You have to relinquish that. That is the Second Noble Truth. Once relinquish that, where are the mind rest? So that is the Third Noble Truth. So the whole cultivation of this path, that is the Fourth Noble Truth. So in many different ways we can argue. So Buddha, Buddha has mentioned or uh, say explained the path in many different angles. Either using the Four Noble Truths we can explain. Either using the Bhojanga Dharma, we can explain. Or Atammeta, we can explain. Non grasping, we can explain. Different approaches are there, but very much like talking about the same result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the thing? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's not a must, by the way. Sir, I'm going to take a look at the table. I'm going to take a look at the table. Examples, will you be able to use it? Examples, I mean, the. Mm, yeah, this part is what you say is the. Correct parts, yeah, uh, just to prove that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Later on, no, not yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I mean, I come through some examples time to time. Mm -hmm. So, certain areas, uh, I mean, you can refer Migasala um, <coughs> uh, Sutta. One, one Sutta called Migasala. So, in that Migasala Sutta, again and again, this temporary release is highlighted. So, with the mention, there are, there are household people and uh, say, uh, this household people, they are practicing and sometimes they have some problems with their morality. But since they are practicing, they time to time experience this temporary release. And therefore they are quite convinced, okay, this temporary release is something. By achieving this temporary release, I can overcome all the shortcomings I already have. So they have that confidence. So you can refer that Megasala Sutta, very nice example. Actually, it's a very uh, interesting discussion. You know, what happened is uh, one, one lady called Migasala. So Migasala's uh, father, so he, he started to practice celibacy during the last stage of, last stage of his life. His father and the brother, father's brother. Exactly. That, that's it. And the father's brother he is not like that. He simply lived the typical household life. But that fellow is an intellectual guy, <laughs> very intelligent guy, by the way. <laughs> so then when both passed away, Buddha declare both of them have achieved Sakadala. So then Migadala was quite upset because I mean, my father lived a real celibate life during his latter stage. My uncle is not like that. He's a fun loving person. <laughs> but Buddha is declaring both have achieved Sakadala. Then how can I trust? Then Buddha, so Migadala put in the question to Venerable Anand. Venerable Anand also couldn't answer. Then Venerable Anand report the matter to Buddha. And Buddha mentioned how the Migasala can understand this. I mean, <laughs> like that, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a criticism is there about Migasala's knowledge. So Buddha mentioned, I mean, these, these skills, calibers are different from person to person. So that is where Buddha analyzed the whole situation with many different ways. One person may be kind of a lustful character. Another person also may be a lustful character, but with wisdom. One person may be a very virtuous character, but no wisdom. Another person may be a virtuous character with wisdom. Another person may be an angry character, no wisdom. Another person is an angry character with wisdom. So likewise, this wisdom has given a fair prominence there. So that person who is more into practice and searching, exploring Dhamma and trying to practice, still defilements are there. He is an angry person. But that person is much better than the other person. So likewise, a beautiful comparison is there. And one point highlighted is this particular person time to time experience that temporary release. That is ex that is explained there. That is highlighted there. So that temporary release is something one may achieve through the practice. So you can't have a temporary release with something else, no. You need to practice in order to have that. 
then when you are more confident about that temporary release, you know, I mean, still I have a lot of defilement, can't help. But when I am able to cultivate this temporary release, one day I will overcome all these defilements. I have now found the path. So that confidence is there. So that is that is really highlighted in this Migasala Sutta. I'll find some, some other some other suttas as well, but this is one interesting sutta to differenti differentiate. Right. So it's an only now, that's why. <laughs> 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 this is an additional, additional half an hour, right? <laughs> 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 right, right. Uh, this came at 1 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then just about this Migasala thing. Hmm. So the wisdom you gain through your meditation practice. Uh, we can say so. But then how come Migasala's uncle who didn't do anything? Not I mean it doesn't, <coughs> say that he, no, he, it doesn't say that he didn't do anything. Okay. He's he led the continuously household life. But at the same time he has done some practice as well. So he has he I mean that is how we can argue uh -huh. depending on the rest of the sutta. So he he may belong to the typical lustful character, but he is an intellectual person, intelligent person who while whole, continuing the household life he is I mean has to some extent developed the path. So this uh, Amati who became Arihat he sorry, sorry. the whole day and then uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So those are, I mean, some exemplarily, sorry, uh, exceptional cases are there. So we can't actually go towards that either. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can have full fun every day and uh, <laughs> those are exceptions. <laughs> you have to go in the majority. <laughs> drunk trusting with dancers and all that. Exactly. Kind of exactly. Now that's a new, I, I saw news. They are going to organize uh, some dance at Millet, what's that? Uh, Port City. Probably yeah. you can attend that and come and see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Report number two. Most venerable Swami in Mahansa. I had been trying to meditate for the last 20 years or so, but due to other responsibilities, could not continue regularly. For the last two years or so, I tried to do Anapanasati meditation for an hour daily and walking meditation for at least half an hour. Given the above history, I cannot see much improvement in my concentration. Would very much value your advice in this regard. Pin Sudhuveva. May I know who has written it? Yes? Uh -huh. I mean, uh, not practicing regularly or? No, I try to practice. practice uh -huh. So, I mean, at the moment, what is what is your feeling about the mind? Uh, what What is the practice you are doing now? I can Oh. Right. Daily you do? Yes, almost. Uh -huh. to do. Then I mean, while walking, what are you experiencing? Uh, I, but I feel uh, the sensations in the, in the soul. Uh -huh. But uh, I cannot sort of concentrate on this. Uh, I mean, I don't can continue, let's say, from one thing to the other. Uh -huh. I can't. Uh, my mind sort of doesn't stay there. Okay, mind get distracted. Distracted then past and future and all that. Uh -huh. I mean, still talk, thinking about various things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, how about sitting? Sitting also, more is the same. Mm. So, I mean, you do Anapanasati? Yes. So, how, how long you can maintain your attention with breath? Maybe five minutes. Then get, get distracted? Yes. I mean, no option. I mean, you have to practice. I mean, practice okay. is the only way. You just have to train the mind. So, I mean, uh, because it has to, I mean, if you if you dedicate a little bit more on the practice, then you have to have a little bit of target, okay, say, now I can maintain my practice on the breath for five minutes. Let me make it six minutes. So, be more realistic and try to make it six minutes, maybe seven minutes. So, likewise, just try to expand it. So, then after a couple of days, okay, you are, you are able to maintain your mind without much distractions with the breath maybe six minutes, seven minutes. So likewise, try to practically expand it. Because I mean, expecting something higher is more frustrating. 
rather than that just be more realistic okay now how long i can maintain okay maybe around five minutes i can maintain fine so let me make it six minutes take it kind of a that uh, without making it a kind of burden just slowly try to develop then then it is more achievable rather than thinking a very far aim that is that is more frustrating I and mean, that that makes me little sort of i can't do it you know something that kind of a negativity might arise if we take too far uh, say milestone too far aim but if i can do five minutes fine make, make, let's make it six minutes likewise you can do i mean anabhanasati is it difficult for you or if so you can take rising and falling of the other one so that will bring you another way where yeah, is more more kind of calming down i find anabhanasati easier Why? 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 Now, when we do anapana sati vipassana, you know, sati pattana, we are coming, we are coming direct touch. We are, we are talking to the direct touch. So that is masking. So, Madhana sati is good. So it, it helps you to detach, to give up. That is good. But later, I mean, even with that kind of a detachment, if you are able to recognize what is really happening momentarily. Because momentary experience is necessary, you know. Mm-hmm. Recognizing that momentary impermanent, how, how how quickly things arise and pass away. So that's a that's a kind of a direct experience. So that is very much like essential for vipassana. So that is why either using anapana sati or dhatu manasikara, this walking, um, maybe vedana anapasana, chitta anapasana. All these things help to recognize things at that very moment and to observe what how how they behave. then the insights are possible okay. yeah you can little uh, keep a little target you know, okay now 5 minutes okay let me take it to 10 minutes within a week mm-hmm. something like that yeah, yeah. Okay. report number 3 cheruvan saranai dear swami in vahansa can we go forward on the dhamma path only by listening to dhamma desana and not practicing meditation some people say this and Some people say this and they cite examples of so- Sopaka, Sunita and others who attain so on only by listening to the Buddha during that time. Even some priests who come on the Pragna channel do not put emphasis on meditation but on understanding the Dhamma mainly through listening to Bana. Kindly explain dear Swami Nuhansa. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, if you can attain, no problem. <laughs> so I think uh, now, you know, this uh, Vendable Sariputta, so he didn't even to have listened to the whole verse, I mean, just a single, I mean, only two sentences. Okay. Two lines. So yeah, what's that? Uh, Yodam, Yedam, Mahe, Turpa, Bhava, Te, Sanghe, Tun, Tatar, Tu, Ah. So he is so tapan now. <laughs> Then the Sanjayo Nirodo Evang Vadi Mahasam. Then the Mughal Lana is all happened. But we didn't do that. We couldn't do that, no. So that that indicates. I mean, we we are we don't have that capacity. I mean, we should we we should not overestimate ourselves. I mean, different people have different capacities. So I mean, we can't say we are, we don't have the capacity either. I mean, then then we are sort of uh, completely abandoned in the past. but we have the capacity but not to the level of mm, say who the so mm, the supatis the sariputta not to the level of the mogdala not to the level of the other whoever else now it, again even during the buddha's time it is it is quite different now say for example buddha's own son rahula how long he took to attain uh, arahantship many years he was ordained at the age of 7 He attained ar- arahantship only at the age of 20 or something. Even Ananda Tero? Exactly. Ananda Tero achieved arahantship only after Buddha passed away. Yeah. And Vendable Rattapal achieved that after 12 years of practice. They are full-fledged arahants. 
not like us I mean. yeah just you know fireflies <laughs> in front of the sun <laughs> so if we think okay I am a sotapan just because I heard the one verse <laughs> that's overestimation that's I mean, just just cheating ourselves I mean, just just cheating ourselves because I mean that's why I mean we need to verify whether we really have achieved that not by someone else's uh, certification but we have to honestly reflect what has really happened into our mind so those those reflections those uh, verification Buddha has mentioned so those verifications actually have some uh, say yeah, practical practical uh, skills that one has to have so one skill is just uh, say look I mean there can't be any defilements without your notice in the mind say for example someone become angry and say blaming another person so later only he understand oh my goodness I got angry no? that, is, that is usually what is happening no? whoever not meditating who is not practicing mindfulness so he may get into even quarrel may get into the arguments but later he regret okay I, I couldn't recognize I was getting to that much of anger he couldn't recognize so the anger has come and it has completely overwhelmed him and he even acted on it very much like he, he doesn't aware of it so Buddha mentioned if, it, if the person is a Sotapanna the very arising of the defilement should be visible should be noticeable probably he can't stop it he may go and argue he may go and even fight but knowing he know very well anger is there so powerful I can't stop it I'm just going to transgress but knowing so this is one quality Buddha highlights so the defilements I mean three levels Buddha mentioned no? transgressive level vidikkama then the pariyuttana level where you come to the surface you can notice and then the hidden level hidden level so hidden level you can't do but whenever it comes to the surface you should notice so this is a very interesting uh, verification to see whether I have that skill if I have that skill probably I can go for the other verifications you are still you can't certify you are a sotapan six more is there six or five more is there so likewise very beautiful uh, verifications Buddha has mentioned so these are inner reflections you are not trying to get a certificate from another person telling okay I have listened to this particular Dhamma sermon can you tell me that I am a Sotapanna unlikely you can't say it like that someone can pretend you and the and the I mean it's very difficult so that's why I mean even I think even the other other arahans can't do it maybe the Buddha can Buddha of course can do but even the other arahans can't do that I mean recognizing another person whether the other person is fully say Sotapan no Sakadaga no something like that even the other other arahans can't do so therefore we can't simply say just by listening Dhamma one can attain Nibbana or Sotapan in, to, in today's terms especially but the others say yes, I agree because yeah. Indriya Paro Pariyatya Jnana only, only for the health. Only for the health. Not have. So that's why, I mean, we have to be more honest with our practice. I mean, we are, we don't need to cheat ourselves. So if we simply overestimate ourselves and say neglect the practice, then who is going to suffer? Who is going to miss the chance, opportunity? We ourselves. So therefore, better continue the practice. Doesn't matter, I'm a Sota, but no, Sagadagami. Still, if I feel I, I have some defilements, I mean, it is enough for me to continue the practice now. So, that is more than enough, rather than pasting a label. That's what uh, I feel. So, I mean, no point of uh, arguing whether I'm a Sota, but no, you are a Sota, but no, something like that. Better continue the practice. So, that is what Buddha recommends. So, that is why he was reluctant even to uh, explain the, these levels at the earlier stages. So that's why the monks were, f I mean, they are continuing their practice and they became fully arahant. So they didn't uh, even ask from the Buddha whether I am a Sotapan or something like that. But later, with uh, many people come to the practice, then they were asking, okay, whether I this or that, when my father passed away, where he has born, whether he is a Sotapan or something like that. Then things came out. Then Buddha gave uh, these kind of explanations. And then people again and again come to the Buddha and ask him. Then he, he, he got troubled by that. 
then he give a recipe okay you people use this recipe and verify yourself <laughs> very practical <laughs> don't come and ask from me <laughs> so that is exactly what has happened so you can refer kosambiya uh, sutta so that is where these six re- reflections were mentioned so using which you have to do a re- honest reflection not just one day not just one time for many years you have to reflect again and again and see whether i have these qualities developed so that is more realistic that is i mean less less chances of going wrong okay. yeah. <coughs> report number 4 tervan saranai dear swami in vahansa my husband gets annoyed and erupts in anger when i have forgotten to do some trivial domestic work When this happens I reply very calmly and almost never talk back harshly. Earlier I used to get angry and used angry words too but now that does not happen. After a few minutes he becomes normal sometimes even kinder than before. My problem is the resentment that arises within me against him lasts a long time. <laughs> Even though outwardly I'm okay and can talk normally, what is the best way to overcome this, dear Swami in Mahansa? This only happens with my husband because no one else calls me these days. Everyone's heard my witness now. Is it written by Chandrika? <laughs> <laughs> Is it you? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Immediate response. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes she writes it and she puts it like someone else's. <laughs> Seems like husband is getting better there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like husband is having more wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> mm, actually, I mean. you are you are knowing no i mean you you know that the say resentment is lasting so you you are you are now familiar with the resentment you can recognize resentment and you know okay still some inner burning is available even though i am able to manage it i am not uh, sort of uh, using any harsh words i am not blaming but still inner burning is there but fairly under control i mean this is how it it may develop so In the previous stages, okay, you are going to harsh words, quarrels, arguments, etc., etc. No knowledge at all, and only later you regret. But later, with the practice, now <coughs> say you still have inner burning, but no arguments, no harsh words. Inner burning is available, so there is a development actually. But later, this inner burning become less and less because you you start to recognize the anger, resentment arising at its very early stages. so then you are not allowing you are not promoting it rather you return back to the say calmness so you turn back to the say emptiness or something like that so actually you have to continue the practice parallelly so the practice helps you to slowly overcome even the inner burden because more you become sensitive more you become say family with the practice you feel it most i mean severely heavily this inner burden so then why am i going to suffer by continuing this inner burning so you yourself will question it then you you quickly let it go rather than maintaining this anger for longer time so you you like to you like to be free from anger i mean you either you forgive it or just forget it or whatever way you like to be calm you like to protect yourself you like to maintain a calm mind so i think uh, this this may happen naturally so you you will feel more heavier more more burning uh, severely as you are as your mind is becoming more refined so the refinement is going on or the purification may continue as you are continuing the practice so don't worry i mean later things may become better yeah report <laughs> <laughs> number 5 teruan saranai dear swami in mahansa Can you please explain the difference between Maitri, Metta, and Karuna? Thank you. Much merit to you. Yeah, Metta, Metta is more kind of a friendly, friendly uh, kind of a loving, loving friendliness, kind kindness. But uh, there, there you don't need the other party to be in a bad situation. 
say if you can have a kind of a common friendly atmosphere friendly feeling towards everyone but on the other hand the compassion comes when the other party is compared to you in a bad situation say he's in a trouble he is going to some economic problem or in a sickness or illness or that kind of a thing so there you feel kind of a mm, uh, you know had a vibration in yourself you 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 feel that suffering of another person you feel that he is in a bad situation so that 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 arouses the compassion so this is a bit different is there yeah that's all that's all okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A small question I will begin. It is uh, two things. Mm-hmm. One in the morning session when you were uh, giving a television this thing, I couldn't uh, understand. Uh, what is that? Guhastha sita game. Is it a normal? Gehasita is the Pali term for grahastha. Grahastha is the similar yeah. term. It's a household life. Ah, so um, uh, b- what do you mean by by um, uh, grahastha sita? Is it no, 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 no. Grahastha sita is not the gehasita means the. I mean, associating the household life, you ah. have you ah. have gehasita is not a sita. Sita All is right, not the right. mind there. All right, okay. So that is the. I mean, household um, day-to-day activity related, household life related. Uh, happiness, household life related, uh, unhappiness, household life related, equanimity. So that as is the gra- uh, sorry. As, as a layman, as a layman, as a typical household person, you have going, you are going through pleasures, you are going through unhappiness, despair, and you are sometimes going through the equanimity. That's it. And the nikkama sita means that uh, you are now in more into a kind of a spiritual part. While you are practicing some spiritual aspects, you have. Happiness, you have unhappiness, and you have equanimity. Then the second one is this manya. Na is it? Uh, uh, it's not prolification. Prolific- it can lead to prolification. Manya na typically means eye-centered thinking. It's not uh, vitakka vichara. We need vitakka vichara. Without that, we can't think. No. Uh-huh. So vitakka vichara is common to thinking. Any any kind of thinking we need with akka vichara. <coughs> so whenever you are thinking, considering I, so I am better than you, I am happier than you, I am uh, say like that. So I centered thinking. I only do better. Ah, way. Huh? Ah, I only do better way. Like better way like that. Whatever oh, the sure. I I the 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 whole whole thinking is centered upon I, the notion of I. Then as, sort of a thought happens. Can um, we can say like that? Yes, asmimana is there. That is, this is very much like the root. While keeping that as the root, various various shoots may come out. So these are the manya. 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 Panyati. So we can't remember the English term. Maybe conception. So something like that. I can't remember the English term. Translated term. They are using Pali term is manya. They are sort of I is there, and I with respect to I, I am thinking. So this actually explained in the um, what is that Yavakala uh, Pisutta? That the book is there, Nevatuna Hita. Yeah, very really interesting sutta. I mean, these are the areas actually as we are continuing the path, more getting to the vipassana. So these are the areas actually we need to explore. How this thinking happens, how the the tendencies happen. So likewise, very interesting areas to explore. Now you got to accept it now. 
Now it is going against your thought. So you want to have the breath say, block, as a blocking, as a unit, but now it is breaking into pieces. Yes. So this is a this is a, I mean this is where the advancement happen. This is where the progress happen. So we basically have the compactness. Now the compactness is slowly breaking. This is an insight. There you understand even though breath appeared like as a one thing, but it is no more. It is dividing into pieces, dividing into parts. Sometimes even my teeth I can see the breath is there. Ah. That breath plus the whole thing. Breaking. Breaking into pieces. No problem. So now now try, if, if possible now try each and every little 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 ones, minute breaths are there no now. Okay. What happens to this minute breath? You can, I mean, when things are happening like that, you can carefully see why what happened to this each and every little guys. You can see that as well. Try to see that. Yeah. So it is, I mean, it, it is against our way of thinking. Yes. Good. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. I have a small experience. It happened really today, uh, but don't laugh at the, uh, this thing. <laughs> now, when I, I when I do the walking meditation, uh, sometimes uh, if I go slow, I can't keep the balance. Mm. I, I might uh, say, yeah. So I go a little faster. So when you do faster, okay, things are okay, but uh, I feel that it's like only an exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My walk, it looks like uh, it doesn't come into the rhythm. So I, then I thought, no, I, I have my, I have to understand my steps. Mm -hmm. uh, steps uh, like that, so this happened, various stages, various ways of going on. So I thought I'd slow down a little and see. An idea came like the Candy Pereira, how the Nilami works. <laughs> <laughs> so I just uh, went on that stage. What happened? Um, mm -hmm. my, my, up to up and down, my mind was on the steps. Yes. Uh, very, very. I could see um, each and every moment. Each and every moment that, uh, so I was thinking that uh, this may be silly that, uh, but up to the time of lunch, I was, uh, I was really no, I should not go to the lunch now. It's going. I am walking like uh, happening uh, perfectly. Perfectly. I don't know why, why what this happened. Whether this something mental upset or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean. Thing is, I mean, sometimes we can little slow down and see, try to see things happening uh, carefully. So, when <coughs> sometimes when you are walking little faster, you can't uh, quickly understand that. But later, when when mind has that uh, say fully active kind of a uh, say experience, then even when say my the body walks in the natural pace, you can recognize uh, all all information. So, I mean. If you want to see more details, naturally it may slow down. No harm. <coughs> but if it is too slow down, it's too much slow, then it's difficult to maintain the path. I mean, maintain the walk. You you lose the balance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No more questions. Then we can wind up. Yeah. Another question. Not another question. Right? No problem. <laughs> yeah. So we have come to the conclusion of uh, today's uh, question and answer session and again the conclusion of this week month's uh, retreat. So today breakfast dana was offered by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jayasiri. Jayasiri, Jayasiri. Just Jayasiri, right? Just Jayasiri. And then lunch dana was offered by Chankami de Silva. So and again uh, we were able to accumulate a lot of merits by going to hold the practice all these three days. And uh, today also we have participated in the Dhamma sermon and again this Dhamma discussion. So all these merits what we have accumulated, we share with all the past relatives. 
we share these merits with all the celestial beings, we share these merits with all the beings who are in need of merits. And let's wish these merits help us also to attain path through Nibbana. While keeping these good wishes in our mind, <coughs> let's recite the traditional verses. Yattavata chaum hei sambhatam punya sambhadam Sambhe deva anumodantu sambha sampatti siddhira Yattavata chaum hei sambhatam punya sambhadam Sambhe bhuta anumodantu sambha sampatti siddhira Yattavata chaum hei sambhatam punya sambhadam Sambhe satta anumodantu sambhe sampatti siddhira Aka satta shagummatta deva nada mahitika Punyantam anumoditva jiram rakhantu sasana Aka satta shagummatta deva nada mahitika Punyantam anumoditva jiram rakhantu desana Aka satta shagummatta deva nada mahitika Punyantan anumoditva jiram rakhantu mamparam Idam ho jati nam ho tu sukita untu nyatayo Idam ho jati nam ho tu sukita untu nyatayo Idam ho jati nam ho tu sukita untu nyatayo Imina punya kami ne mami vale samadamu Satam samadamu ho tu ya venibane patia Imina punya kami ne mami vale samadamu Satan samadamu ho tu ya venibane patia Imina punya kami ne mami vale samadamu Satan samadamu ho tu ya venibane patia Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Ah, you have to set the five to the five, right? so you may recite Kamotas three times. <coughs> Uthiyampi sanghang saranam gachami Tatiyampi buddhang saranam gachami Tatiyampi dhammang saranam gachami Tatiyampi sanghang saranam gachami Saranagamanam sampunnam Panatipata veramani sikhapadam samadhyami Adinadana veramani sikhapadam samadhyami Kamesu michachara veramani sikhapadam samadhyami Sāvādhā vīramani sikhāpadam samādhyāmi Visunāvācā vīramani sikhāpadam samādhyāmi Parusāvācā vīramani sikhāpadam samādhyāmi Sampapalapa Viramani Sikhapadam Samadhyami Mitcha Ajiva Viramani Sikhapadam Samadhyami Tisaranena Sabdhin Ajiva Tamakasilam Dhammam Sadukam Surakhitam Katwa Apamadena Sampadetabbam 